friends beginning with ship construction part 3 our next topics are global stresses and local stresses now look at the word global means overall so the stresses which are acting over all the extremities of a ship are called global stresses now look at the word local stresses the word local okay those stresses which act over a particular region of a ship are called local stresses under local stresses you will see you, we have panting pounding local stresses or local loading openings present on deck present uh, these stresses then ends of the superstructure also present local stresses under global stresses as you can see this is the ship now when the stresses are acting globally would be in longitudinal direction and in the transverse direction so you have longitudinal stresses and transverse stresses now these stresses how they affect the ship in still water and in seaway let's see how these occur now your longitudinal stresses are uh, one is the shearing forces which develop now shearing forces what is the definition for shearing forces shearing forces are the algebraic sum of the forces which are acting vertically upwards okay towards uh, one side of that point so let's see how this algebraic sum is calculated and what are these forces one is the weight of the ship which is acting downwards along with the weight of the cargo other is the buoyancy force so let's make the diagram considering this as the ship in still water let's do the weight distribution as w1 w2 w3 okay and the buoyancy forces as b1 and b2 now remember friends all the weight of the ship acting downwards would be equal to the total buoyancy forces which are acting upwards hence your ship is floating right so here also this is the weight distribution so your w1 plus w2 plus w3 would be equal to b1 plus b2 okay these are the buoyancy forces which are acting upwards now what was the definition for shearing force now let's consider the what shearing forces would be acting at this point of the ship okay so for sharing to calculate the sharing forces acting towards this point of uh, the ship uh, you have to uh, set up a sign convention first so what i'm setting up is from left to right i'm taking the sign convention for upward forces which are acting as positive for downward forces which are acting as negative and from right to left i'm taking sign convention for upward forces as negative and downward forces as positive okay now remember from left to right and right to left the sign convention uh, your signs have to be different and uh, this is what I have taken. Now let's see how this equation comes. From left to right when you go, your sharing force would be uh, as follows acting towards this point. Is now upward force is positive. So B1 is positive. B1 minus W1 is the sharing force acting towards this point from left to right. Now this, this forces would be equal to from when you come from right to left. Now the upward forces you have taken as negative. Hence w2 plus w3 minus b2 so this is the sharing force this equation would be equal to this now let's look at the definition once again what is sharing forces it is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces acting vertically upwards towards one side of that point so from left to right and from right to left so this is what sharing forces are so friends uh, what sharing forces are sharing forces are the forces which tends to shear away the plating okay then comes bending moment now for bending moment kindly uh, look look into ship construction part 2 lecture for bending moment in still water and bending moment in seaway then comes your transverse stresses which are acting now this under the global stresses uh, i forgot to add uh, dry docking okay dry docking and the global stresses which act is uh, water pressure now let's see how these forces act now water pressure as you can see this is the ship 
Now, water pressure tends to act uh, perpendicularly to the surface of the ship. So, it acts in from all the direction. So, this is how your water pressure would be acting. Perpendicular to the surface. Such that what it does is it's, it tends to push the side shell plating inwards, the bottom shell plating inwards, the side shell plating inwards. Okay, so this is due to the water pressure which is acting from all the sides. So if this is your ship, this is the water, water line. So the pressure would be acting in all the direction, from all the direction. Okay, so this is the water pressure which acts globally on the ship. Hence, this comes under transverse stresses. Okay, because it tends to push the side shell plating in inwards. Okay, hence it comes in under transverse stresses. So, friends, our next topic is raking stress. Now, raking stress it occurs when the ship is rolling. Okay, so this also comes under your dynamic stresses. When the ship is rolling, what happens is acceleration due to the rolling and deacceleration due to the waves occurs, which tends to distort the side shell pitting in the transverse direction. Let's see how this occurs. Now, this is your ship in the transverse direction. Let's consider this as the wave. Now, what happens is the acceleration and deacceleration occurs okay it tends to distort the side shell plating in such a way in the transverse direction which is called as raking so this is the definition for raking and raking is uh, it uh, it is it occurs maximum in uh, your when the ship is in light ship condition or uh, when the ship is uh, empty or in ballast condition that is when maximum uh, of the raking stresses develop on the ship and what do you do to compensate for these raking stresses is as follows you have uh, you have transverse beam okay you have transverse beam then uh, you have side side frames or transverse frames okay and you have a knee bracket So this is your transverse beam. This is your transverse frame. And this is the knee bracket. They provide for transverse strengthening. So these are the structures which help in compensating for the raking stresses. This is what you have to tell the surveyor. And this gap what you are seeing over here, I have left it for your longitudinals. Okay. So I am not adding longitudinals over here. So longitudinals you need not say. So these are the structures which help in compensating for the raking stresses. So friends, our next topic is torsional stresses. Now, torsional stresses is nothing but when a twisting or a torque movement occurs uh, on the ship's hull, okay, the ship is then set to be in torsion. Okay, as you can see in the figure over here. Now, this usually happens when uh, you are taking on the waves on a 45 degree angle. Okay, usually it happens uh, during those times. Okay, when the wave is acting uh, like this, it hits the uh, bow region in such a way. So, what happens is your bow region tends to turn anti -clock, uh, clockwise, and in the stern region, the waves uh, act from the uh, opposite direction. And hence, there is an anti clockwise, uh, the forces act in the anti clockwise direction in the stern region. This results in twisting movement. This twisting or the torque movement which uh, occurs on the hull. Is called uh, is said to be uh, torsion. This is when the ship is subjected to torsion. 
Now, what do you do for compensating for uh, torsion is now torsion. Remember that torsional stress occurs maximum where the width of the ship is larger, as well as it has large openings. So, such ships uh, you will find uh, such properties in a container ship. So, remember that torsion occurs maximum in a container ship that too when it is empty. Okay. So, what they have done is uh, to compensate for this. The container ships are provided with torsion box. This is called as torsional torsion box. Okay. Now if you look into the construction of the torsional box, it would be something like this. These are bulk plate, uh, bulk plating, which is uh, bulks which are present. Okay, these are straws, and this is the web. Now this will go continuously from uh, continue. It is continuous in the longitudinal direction of the ship structure. So these are your torsional boxes, which compensate for torsional stresses. So friends, uh, next topic is dry docking. Under dry docking, how the global stresses develop is as follows. As you can see, the ship is lying only on the keel blocks over here. So what happens is this tends to distort the side shell plating in such a way, okay? In such a way, the side shell plating will try to distort. So these stresses develop along the length of the ship. So these are global stresses, okay? And well, this was previously how it used to be. But now more uh, better procedures have come up. Now you will find like in dry dock, your ship is supported from all the sides. Okay. You will find the ship is well supported from all the sides. Well, you can consider the dry dock stresses usually occur for a specific duration of time. Okay. For few, uh, for the initial period, the dry dock stresses occur. So our next topic is under local local stresses is panting. Now panting is the uh, inhalation and exhalation of the side shell plating in the forward region is called panting. Uh, usually it is this region, this region of the ship. It is this region which will undergo maximum panting. It is the uh, exhalation, inhalation and exhalation of the side shell plating. Uh, which occurs which uh, uh, in the forward region is called panting. Now, the surveyor may ask you the questions which the surveyor asks is what, what, what do you do for panting? How do you compensate for panting? So, there are panting beams which are present. Okay, then you have your panting stringers, panting beams, then uh, uh, so panting stringers, panting beams are present, breast hooks are present. These are the structures which are used to compensate for panting. Then extra floorings are present over here. Then comes your pounding. What is pounding? Now pounding is nothing but it is the slamming of the deck. Slamming of the shell, bottom shell plating into the water is called pounding. So if considering this as a ship. Now this region, this region of the ship. When, when the ship goes up and slams down on the water, it results in uh, pounding. Okay, so this region usually undergoes pounding. This region as well as in the aft. Okay, this region also. Usually it is the this region which will undergo uh, pounding. This The pounding is due to heaving of the ship and pitching. Heaving and pitching results in pounding stresses to be developed. So to compensate for this, now what is what uh, what they have done is thirty percent of the forward length of the ship, okay, is strengthened. Uh, extra strengthening has been provided to this region for ships greater than sixty five meters in length, and for those ships which have their draft less uh, the forward draft less than zero point zero four five length of the ship, for those ships thirty percent of the forward region have to, uh, for forward region or the forward length of the ship have to be provided with extra strengthening to compensate for pounding stress. 
The next stress is your local stress or local loading. Now local stress or local loading is due to the cargo loaded or the machinery which are present on board. Okay, the accommodation over here, the uh, machine uh, engine room over here. Okay, the winches, windlasses present over here. Your cranes. Okay. So local stresses occur over here where the machinery is present. Okay. So to compensate for this, these regions have to be provided with extra strengthening, extra frames to be present, uh, extra framing to be present, and uh, extra strengthening to be done. Here you will see that much closer uh, frame spacing is done, and uh, more of your uh, more flows are provided over here. More plate flows are provided in this region. Then comes opening present on the deck. Now openings present on the deck are. Your hatch openings. I'm considering this as the hatch opening. Now, to compensate for this, th these are the local stresses. Now, the stresses will develop over here in this the corners of your uh, openings. So, to compensate for this, what they have done is they provide for longitudinal girders which pass straight. Okay, continuous longitudinal girders and transverse beams. Okay. These longitudinal girders and transverse beams are used as well as near the hatch opening, under the hatch opening, gusset plate is used. Okay, now the function of gusset plate is to dissipate the stresses. Okay, to dissipate the stresses so that they can uh, easily flow downwards and are uh, distributed equally. Okay. So that the crack doesn't develop over here and result in uh, breaking of the ship structure. So this is what uh, local stresses are for opening present on the deck. And end of the superstructures as you can see for accommodation. Accommodation is one of the superstructure. So this region has to be provided with extra strengthening to compensate for your local stresses. Under cr near cranes where cranes are fitted, this portion has to be uh, provided with extra strengthening. Then, uh, uh, where the superstructure are joined, okay. So these these are, have to be provided with extra strengthening. These platings have to be provided with extra strengthening where the superstructure are joined. So remember that uh, ship is made in different parts. Your aft, your middle body, then the forward region. So these are the superstructures. And then they are uh, in, uh, in uh, dry dock or in the dock area, in the shipyard, they are joined. And so the, the stresses which occur over here, uh, where the joints are present, are called the uh, local stresses which occur at the end of the superstructure. And hence, they have to be provided with ex extra strengthening at these regions as they are prone to uh, more stresses compared to the uh, whole of the structure.